Praise the Lord. Fill him with your love and your guidance, O Lord, and strengthen us, O Lord. And most of all, Lord, give us the power and strength to be obedient to what you have to do, Lord. So we give you honor and we give you glory, Lord. Lay your hands on us, Pastor. And also, Happy Father's Day. Amen. To turn to, to the book of Romans, chapter chapter 13, verse 7. First thing I want to do, just, just to give honor and glory where honor is due. The book of Romans, chapter 7, it says to uh, Romans 13, 7, I'm sorry, it says, to render to all, all of what is due to them. Tax, to whom tax is due. Custom, to whom custom, fear, to whom fear, and honor, to whom honor is due. Also in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 12, it says, Honor your father and your mother, that it may go well with you all the days of your life. So I wish everybody a happy Father's Day, and we want to give you honor for that. For today's text, I want you to go to the book of Luke, chapter 15, starting verse 11, please. Luke 15, 11. This is what every father needs and every son wants, is the title of my message. What every father needs and what every son wants. Amen? amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. It's found in the book of Luke, chapter 11. Actually, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 20, forgive me. Luke chapter 15, 11 through 20, the story of the prodigal son with a twist, certainly, you know me. A certain man had two sons. Going on to verse 12, I'm going to go down to about 20. So the younger one came to his father and he said, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Give me the portion that falls to me. He didn't ask his father for anything. Just, just give me what's mine. Give me what's going to be mine after you die, before you die, whatever. Give, give me what's mine. The portion that falls to me. And he divided them and, and, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and I'm just thinking, how much stuff could you possibly have that it takes you a few days to gather stuff together? I could throw my stuff in a bag in a truck in two hours. <laughs> that was a joke. Yep. <laughs> you know, I mean, you shouldn't have. I mean, it must have been a lot that they had. Is what I'm saying. You know, it says he uh, he gathered all together, and he took his journey into a far country. If you're one of those people that underlines, please, journey and far country. And there he wasted his substance in riotous, riotous, riot, riotous to it, living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. You know how we say when you do things that are out of God's will, they'll take you to places that you never wanted to go, make you spend more than you anticipated on spending, you know, and, uh, and make you do things that you never thought you'd do in a million years. Amen. Amen. And so this is where this young man finds himself now. And when he came to himself, it says, uh, I'm sorry, verse 16. And when he would, and when he would fain, would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. You know, it's, it's funny, I just, just want to pause for a moment there. I recall that, you know, that many of us who have been out there in the world and have partied and have bought drinks for the drinks for the, for the bar or have had friends hang with us. It's, it's wonderful how, how when you have something, you would just have so many people around. But when you're busted, you know, everybody seems to vanish and disappear. Right? But when you're healthy and have people, you know, they certainly do show up, don't they? 
And when he came to him, it says, uh, and nobody gave him, gave unto him anything. Verse 17, and when he came to himself, some verses say when he came to his senses, some verses say when he came to his right mind, he said, how many hired servants of my father's, hired servants of my father's, I know you've heard this story before, I just want to give it some emphasis, have bread enough to spare. I mean, how many servants of my dad's have enough that they even have to spare? And I perish in hunger, or with hunger. I will arise, as that he came to his senses, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. You know, that's, that's strange when a son comes back and says, Daddy, you know, I know I blew everything that you gave me. Can I just work for you? Can I just work for you? Hey. So I think about that. I'm your son. You're my father. Can I just work for you? Not, not can I work with you and be faithful and take over the family business, but, I, but, but can I just work for you? I just... I, I gotta eat. Anybody follow me? Amen. And I will rise and go to my father's house and say to him, I have sinned against heaven and against thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son, and make me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, you might want to underline that, whatever that says in your version of the Bible, it should say something about distance and a far off and a way off or something to do with distance that his father could see him no matter where he was. Amen? But when he was a great way off, his father saw him. He had compassion and ran. How can you have compassion before you see someone? begs to ask that question. How can you already have compassion before you see the condition of an individual? You want to be so honest? You have to have compassion and know the condition of someone before you even get to them. You can't get to them and then assess the situation, see what's needed. But you have to go there ready Somebody say amen or something. Amen. But when he was getting a way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck. His father fell on his son's neck. And he kissed him. May God have his blessing to the word. Father in heaven, I pray that you will be with us and that you will open our eyes to what you want us to hear today. I thank you for this wonderful day that we get to celebrate. And uh, pray that you will be with each and every one today and they will capture the spirit, the essence of this, of this portion of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The story that I'm reading to you this morning, I know we've all heard it, but I want you to comprehend more than just the text. When you see the experience that happens. Some things that are happening outside. This a young man is being said to have taken and gone his own way. It would seem that he had a streak of a rebellion in him. Uh, that he would dare to ask his father, give me my portion. Give me what to do to me. I'm not staying here anymore. I'm not living this life anymore. I'm not herding sheep or flock or harvesting. I'm not doing this. Thing. I'm out of here. Give me what's mine. You know, not to mention that 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 would usually come if a son or a daughter was going to get married. They would give something to them, that perhaps a dowry, something to get them started. But that this kind of a portion was given at the death of a father. Things would be split up and apportioned to the family as, as he had directed. It, uh, can I get an amen? amen? So this father is still alive, uh, and he's got a son there,
who said, give me my portion. Give me what will fall to me. Give me what will fall to me in your death. Act like you're dying and give me what's mine now. I want it now. I mean, that's got to break my father's heart right there. You follow me? So the youngest son, you know, he thought that he had it all together. He thought he had it all figured out. He thought that, you know, if I could just get this bit of money, if I could get this bit of finances, I can, I can work things out. I can make my own road. I can cut my own path in life, and I will be okay. What he didn't realize is that it's like those people who win the lottery. Anybody see them? They win the lottery, and six months later, they're either dead or they're dead broke. Because they don't know how to handle... You know, two hundred million dollars to begin with. They can't handle seventy bucks. They're not going to be able to handle seven hundred thousand. Right or wrong, you know. So they're they're already broke. They they don't know what to do with it. He's out partying. He's buying for everybody. He's in riotous living. He's just just he's making a mockery of himself. You know, people, strangers are coming up saying, "Come on in, come, come, come on in." This guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to buy for everybody. It don't matter. You have to say, "Hey, Joe, how you doing?" He's just he's going to buy for whoever. You know, so, so he thought that if that's Jesus, please mention my hello to him and, and wish his father happy. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's not what I wanted it to be. <laughs> and like most fathers, I want you to see that his father gave him exactly what he asked for. Am I right or wrong? You see, because this father at this point, he didn't have to agree with this. The son didn't say, hey, listen, I'm planning on leaving and maybe starting a business, buying a little, a little land of my own, maybe building some huts and renting them out to, to some Hebrews or something. Oh, what do you think of that, Dad? What do you think of this plan? Could you maybe spot me a little bit and give me a bit of my inheritance that would fall to me later? I want to try something, a venture new, you know, I want to try something. It wasn't like that. Or, or but he didn't even say, Dad, how do you feel about me doing this? I mean, here I come, I have a request, give me. I'm not saying, uh, you know, would you give me? Uh, is this a possibility? Could this happen? It's like, give me my portion. Give me what would fall to me. And that attitude alone lends itself to sometimes how we act. You know, give me my portion. I want to do my own thing. I don't want to do what you're doing. I don't want to do what they're doing. I want to do, I want to do my own thing. I want to spend it my way. I want what I want. And I want it now. Are you with me? He said, give me my portion. And his father gave him all he wanted. His father gave him exactly what would fall to him. And sometimes, you know, there's, there's a first lesson to be learned here is that sometimes a good father should not give all just because it's asked for. Sometimes if you give people everything they ask for, it's too much for them to handle. Is anybody following? But I've seen parents who are so... Their, their mind is distorted and because I was hurt and abused and they treated me bad, I'm not going to let my son not have anything he doesn't want or my daughter. They can do what they want. And because I was treated this way, I'm going to get freedom in that way. And because I was always told to stay in the house, you can go out wherever you want, hang with you, uh, whatever you want. And so we do, we do the absolute opposite and swing the pendulum the opposite way and find no balance at all. Can I say that? We find no balance at all. So sometimes it's not healthy, and it's not good, that's the one. It's not good, it's not healthy to give everything that is asked for. That's right. Amen. Sometimes, listen to me, this portion is yours at a certain time, and this is not the time. And I am not dead, and you're not getting it now. Neither did you ask my advice about this. You, uh, you almost came to me and demanded, give me what's mine. Give me what will fall to me. And you're dead, give me what would fall to me. So he gave him everything that he wanted. The younger son, I'm sorry, yes, there we go. So the younger son, he, he, uh, he finds himself wanting one day 
in a pig pen. He goes out and he spends his money in riotous living, riotous living, living like he's crazy, living like, like, like there's no tomorrow, living like the money is not going to run out, living like the funds and the resources aren't going to run out. It's wonderful to have all these friends, all these people who love you. And listen, everybody, I, I shared this out this morning, I shared a different message at 8 a.m., so you might want to listen to that one too, but, but it, it, it amazes me how many people now, you know, they're, uh, they're not on Google, uh, they're not on, 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 on this, like they're, uh, they're not tweeting, and uh, they're not on circles. I found that it's circles. You can talk to doctors, or you can talk to pastors, you can talk to people who have bites, you can talk to, talk to anything you want. People play the piano, people who worship, you know, whatever you want. There's circles, you know, and then people friend, if you know this guy, then you may know this one, but or you may want to know this one who's very skilled, and, and you know, and so I say, I don't want anybody cursing the being a karate player like this. I said, oh, then you want this circle. And then I have a circle, and I'm like, wow, I got like 1,252 friends. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I, 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 somebody wants a piece of me. Right, wrong. Well, you follow me? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, these things, these sterile sites can give you the illusion that you've got so many people that are, you know, I've got, I've got 200 followers. Right? Right? I mean, I've got people following me, and we, and, and, and these, these sites are giving you the illusion that people are Pinterest, and they're following you, and Googling, and they're following you around their Facebook, and they're following you, and they're all, right on what you're doing, and give you a false sense of that you have this value when, 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 when there's nothing there. There's no relationship. It's sterile. It's all about a picture. And how much are you going to show at some point? Or do you have the same kind of hate I do? We can hate together. Gossip together, talk together. And not friends. But back to the side. Sometimes it, the Lord will only bless you when you're, when you're in a hog pen. It says that after he wasted everything he had, it, it said he came to a point where, where he, he loaned himself out. He, he, he sold himself. He rented himself. He, he hired himself out to a citizen of that far away land. Not his culture, not his place, didn't belong there. Not his people. Which sent him out to feed his pigs, unkosher, uncool. Good big daddy happy. He said that he was so hungry, even working, even having a job, he still didn't make enough that he, he, he would almost want to faint and faint if, if, if he didn't eat some of the scraps he was given the very pigs. And let me tell you something. You know you are in trouble when you get to the place where you're in a pig pen and you're hungry and you're eating pig slop. But sometimes that's what it takes for us to get our right thing. Sometimes there are some of us that we have some of us, well, I never did, I never did drugs, I never did, I never did, I, I never did that, I never committed adultery, I never lost, I never did this, I never did that, I never did that. We get so much pride in that. But, but you know that there are some of us that we won't get a right mind until we're a big man. We won't get a, a right mind and start thinking. And, 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 and listen to me, it doesn't mean drugs is not the issue. People don't take drugs because they, they, they say, I'm going to be the best drug addict now. I'm going to be the greatest drug addict ever lived. Hey, people take drugs because they want to feel happy because something is making their soul fat. People don't take drugs because they want to get high. They want to they make the pain go away. Something in this life has made the pain go away. Now this father was a good father. He asked for what you want. Ask for what you want. When I die, what would be my portion? Hey. Ah. What a good, good father. What was it? Go find that. Are you ready? So the Bible says in verse 13, he took his journey into a far country and wasted, wasted his substance. All he had it, and riotous living. And riotous living. Carried the word of uh, riotous as in reckless. You know, when, when people start to write, they're, they're being reckless. Are you follow me? And reckless living. Think about it that way. Put that word down for one. And reckless living. You know, just, just like it doesn't matter. Here. Yeah, come on. Rounds for everybody. Everybody. What do you want? You want some? Come on here. Take, you know, this for you. Hey, hey, get the kids up here. Come on, give them. And he didn't realize, you know, you know, those crazy transcendents. 
those things stop. They come to an end. Resources run out. Money goes blank. You got you to pay for everything. And those of us who, are, who have been in a, a particular state, and, and this is all of us have been. It doesn't matter if you've been an addict, not addict, this, that, whatever, man. If you're a sinner, you've been what I'm talking about. You've been your place where, where, where you've got to be in a big time realizing, you know, I'm so proud that I'm happy. I'm so this. I, I, I think I got it so figured out that, 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 that uh, this is my portion and I gave my own vote in the Lord and God is saying, you know, you think that's what I want you to do? You're wrong. That's not my plan. You've got to talk to your father. You just said, this is what I'd like to do and I want to do it. So don't think it's just the, the person on, on some addiction or something. We've all got some draw. But every man is drawn when he is drawn from his own lust and enticed. Doesn't say from drugs and taken down a cracker. Every man is, is drawn away when he is drawn of his own lust and enticed. And then it brings forth sin and sin brings forth death. Did somebody get an amen? Because, because this is not just for those that have fallen or have slipped by the way or have done something wrong. But we've all, you know, all that sin and come short of the glory of God. Are you following me? It says he took all his, he took all his, uh, all his substance, all his money, all his resources, and riotous living and riotous comes from the word to to be reckless, living reckless, loot, excessive. There's over the top. There's too much. There's no plan in this. There was no plan. Yeah, you just took your money from your father and you're wasting everything. There's no plan here to try to excel and, and, and get something or maybe to have an income or, or, or to reproduce. It's wasting it. You're, you're wasting it. I have to think to myself, what was on this young son's mind that he would think, I'm just, I'm just going to waste it. I'm just going to have fun. I may miss something. If I don't waste it, I'll be stuck here in my father's father's house. Thank you, brother. I'll be stuck here in my father's house, and and I'm gonna have I'm gonna waste this. I just want to have fun. Amen. How many of you know that sin is fun for a season? It is. It is. It feels good for a little while. It's for a little while. When you try to get away, you're like, oh, what's that? And it's like, I got you now. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? I, I'm going home. You got to get up now. No. You got things to do. Woo! What kind of thing? Woo! Things you didn't want to do. Woo uh, how much is it going to cost you? It's not, I, I don't have any money. You'll get it. I don't have any resources. You'll make it. How, how is it going to be? Because i got to be honest. Don't, don't worry about it. That relationship is over. You blew that one already. Did you realize it? So the people around are disturbed too. I mean, these uh, uh, people, if you think of reckless, uh, if anybody's ever been around a reckless person, he doesn't know any effect him, does he? He affects everybody. If you have a person here reckless, they, they, they will affect everybody. Everybody can say, oh my God, watch the kid. Look, look at this guy. How's he driving like that? Watch him. Get him out of the lot. Put him over there. Parents will be, hey God, come on, get the kid. Get, get there, kids. Call him over here. This guy's back. He doesn't even know he's being, he's being reckless. Right, he's, he's being excessive. He's, 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 being, he's not thinking. Anybody follow me? Yes. So when people are excessive or reckless or riotous, they hurt everybody. So all these people are now, it's not just him and, him and a couple of guys in some bar room or him and a couple of guys in some field. It's like all the people in the neighborhood are like, you know, watch this guy, man. He's like, man, he thinks he's got it going that way and he can buy his way out of everything, you know? Right? Have you follow me? They take no responsibility for what they're doing. You wonder why this a Father's Day message. It is. What every son wants. What every son needs and whatever their father needs. People all around him were disturbed. And finally the inevitable, the inevitable happened. He went broke. You see, in this story, you know, we always talk about it, but, but finally the inevitable happened. He went broke. It, it was over. It was over. I told you, he, 
He went and he rented himself out. He went to try to get a job and get some food just to eat, pick slop, and just, just, just finally it happened. He, he, he was down. It was done. It was over. The game is, game is over. And isn't that how it is in sin? It's just like it's fun. Or like, hi, I'm having fun. It's just exciting, you know. And it's all going well. And then the bottom drops out of your life. And you wonder, oh my gosh, where's my friends? Where's my family? Where's my people? Where's the ones that love me? Where's my best friend? Where's my, where's my best male friend? My best female friend? Where's the people that care about me? They're gone. I left them behind. I left them. But thank God for the big pen. You see, that's what I wanted to focus on. Here. Thank God for the big pen. I, I, I tell you, I never ever thought I would thank God for a big pen. So I read this a few times, I read it over and over again, and I thought, thank God for the big pen. Because for some of us, it's, it's listening. We, uh, we'll play church, we'll play religion, we'll play whatever, we'll dress up, we'll play makeup, we'll play whatever, we'll play drive-by car, we'll play, we'll play whatever, we'll play successful until we reach a big pen in our life. And that doesn't have to be a slot pen. It doesn't have to be a poverty pen. It, can, it, it doesn't have to be that. It can be anything that takes you to a place where you say, My God, what have I done with my life? What have I done with my life? What have I done with all that I have? Thank God for the pig pen and the pig pen. When you're in the slot and you're deep, deep in it and you're hungry and you know and you say, What am I doing? What's going on? Some of us don't come to our right mind, our right thinking, our right sensibility until we reach that place where there's a big pen in your life that makes you think. You see, a big pen will make you think, well, what am I doing here? A big pen will make you think, what my father's got slaves that eat better than this? What am I, what, what my father's slaves would never eat this? What am I doing here? And my boss says, I can't even eat this. I become a thief. I'm stealing pig slop. You talk about reaching the bottom of the barrel. Thank God for the pig pen. There are some of us that we run from it, we'll hide from it, we'll lie about it, we'll, I, I, I've never been here. I told you I don't trust a man or woman without a limit. You gotta let me know there's something happened, man, where, where God got you. If, if, I don't trust you. If, if you don't got a limit, then, then, then just wait, you know, because I'll see you in a little while and you'll have one and, and I'll know that God got a hold of you. People who walk too straight, act like they walk on water, I do not trust. I know it's just, just, it's just a matter of time. Stay with me. Think, I think about this for a second. This, this son now, he's in a hog pen. And now, you know, I, I, I mean, I think it's so funny. It's, it's at this point, when he comes to his senses, it's, it's, it's just in this portion, right? I mean, it's not, it's not this riotous living that he comes to his senses. And it's not in the fun part. It's not in the addiction. It's not in the sharing. It's not in the popularity. Oh, look how many people love me. You know, look at all my followers. Look at all. Yeah, really? Uh, wait till you run out of money to see your followers. Wait till, you, wait till you say the wrong thing on Facebook. I'm afraid. Huh? Really? Because that's how it's going to be in heaven. 
That's how it's going to be in heaven, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, I hate the honesty of the fact that the church is one of the most segregated places on the planet. Amen. I need to say that again. Dutch church is, is probably one of the most segregated places on the planet. All the people are the same kind, same class, same color, same type, same time, same money, same agenda. They all meet in the same place. Amen. All the governors go to, they all go, they all go. It doesn't matter what you believe, that's the church where you belong. You, you, if you're this tallest, then that's where you go. But thank God, listen to me. It's not till you get to a hog pen. A hog pen situation. A hog pen situation is a situation where we're like, it is all run out. Is there's nothing that you you are starving, you are hungry, you know you're hungry, you are beginning to come to your senses that I have nothing. All my friends are gone, all my followers are gone, everything is gone, I have nothing, nobody's here with me. Where's all the buddies at now? Where's all the crowd now? There's no one with you, you're alone with a bunch of pigs with a bucket of slop in your hand. And you stink. And it's not until you begin to realize. I stink. When you get that aroma of sinning yourself, that's when you come to your senses and say, something's got to change. Something's got to change. Don't you know something? It's as he began to come to his senses. In verse 15 it says, and then he went and he joined himself to a citizen. This man was in desperation. And then in 17 it says, and, he, and when he came to his senses, in verse 17, he said, how many of my father, now he's, uh, now he's starting to recall things. See, it takes a, a hot pen situation to bring you to a recollection of like, oh, things were good. <laughs> you know, things I thought were not going my way, that wasn't too bad after all. Sometimes it takes you dropping real low to, to realize, you know, I had all right. I don't care how poor a man or woman is here. Go to Santo Domingo, uh, go to Santo Domingo and see fuegos. You'll come back home feeling like a millionaire. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, you'll see a double a in a whole lot. I mean, where's my remote? You know, oh my goodness, my battery's out. It's not working. Good guys, that's a whole new life for knowing that you can run right down to 7-Eleven and get it. You know, five times the price. Yeah. And you can afford it. Yeah. And you're broke. He says, uh, how many of my hired, uh, excuse me, how many hired servants of my father's fathers have bread enough and to spare? He's thinking. You see, you follow me? He's actually telling us what he's thinking. He's thinking, wow, you know, I'm thinking of my father's servants. They have food and enough to spare. They have extra food. They're not treated like this. He's starting to think that. He says, uh, you know, here I am, and I perish with hunger. He's thinking, and, 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 and here I am starving. Well, here my life is a wreck. It doesn't have to be hunger, folks. It could just be that you realize that, you know, something smells, it's sin on me, and, and, and I've gotten myself into this, and, and I take ownership for it. Amen. Amen. It's not always somebody else's fault. It's not that, that pastor, that church, that deacon, that, that. It, it's just my fault. I made that choice. It says too, it says, uh, I will go to my father, uh, verse 18, I will arise, get up. I will arise and go to my father. To my father, come. Then it says, and I will say to him, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I realize, <coughs> something was speaking that sentence about ownership. Amen. I sit in heaven, I took so for granted how blessed I was. I sinned against you, man. I treated you wrong, Dad. I should have asked you, what do you think about this? You sit down with me on a little thing over here and you just say, yeah, what do you think about this? Uh, but I never wanted your, your input. I never respected it. You know, I, I started out with, I said, give honor and honor. You honor your father and your mother that it may go well with you all the days of your life. I know some of us don't have that. And I, man, I think of poor Ivan coming up here and some of you others who I know that your dad is not around. And, 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 and I think, man, you know, I'm, 
I'm sorry for that. You know, but, 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 but uh, the Jesus said that God is a God. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a father to the fatherless. The father to the fatherless. So be a father, man. There's a father in heaven that goes well above, beyond any father that has the wisdom, the wisdom of the ages and the wisdom of your well-being and mine. I'm closing soon. Yeah, very soon. Let me have another 12 pages. Amen. <laughs> I tell you what, in those inspirations, and in, in those thoughts, and that little sentence there, right, you can almost hear his heart. Says, yeah, you know, I'm going to go back to my father's house. Like, you can almost hear his heart. Like, I, I, I got to go home. You know, I, I, I love being a father because, you know, God bless my kids. I hope they always do well. But I make something very clear to them. No matter where you are, no matter what the day is, no matter what happens, no matter what the situation is, you can come home anytime you want. I know sometimes six days after that, I want to say you can leave as soon as you want. <laughs> so you can come home as soon as you want, right? Okay? Honestly, I mean, I know there's a time limit on everything, grace and all that. I've done, I'm just being honest. I mean, in my heart, it's like, hey, man, if you ever need, you know, I'm here, man. Come knock on the door you know, or sneak in the back window like you know to do. <laughs> By the way, those are my shoes. Debbie, they, they just said. <laughs> so he runs back to his father's house, and the first thing he starts doing is, folks, look at this. He starts confessing, man. He starts confessing. Which is something that we don't do. We sometimes, you know, kind of flick what they call it in Spanish. I don't know what you call it in English. It just, just, I guess it would be a fresh face, you know. And I, I, they'll show up home and, and, and stuff to open the fridge and everything like they, I, I like to just own stuff. And don't ever even say thank you. Mom, thank you, Dad, for having that. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I blew it, man. I really dropped the ball. Thank you for being kind. Just always opening your home. You know, you don't have to ask to open that, but maybe it'd be nice to hear a son or daughter say, thank you every once in a while. Just a thank you. I take ownership for how and where I landed. You know, and whatever big pen that was. The Bible says too, it says uh, very clearly, it says, and I love this part, it says, but the Bible says that, uh, uh, that when he saw his son a great way off, a great distance off. When he saw him a great way off, he had compassion on him. I'm thinking, I usually want to assess the situation. I've, I've, I've learned not to do that now. But there was a time when I, you know, let's see what's going on. Let's, you know, do some question and answer, a little Q&A, see what's going on. But this thought was like, it, it's like he had eyes before he left. It's like through, a, through he had this wisdom, like knowing, like like just just glad to get what he wants, because he's not going to be happy until he matures. And I think it's more of a lesson of maturity than anything else than of a son in rebellion taking what they got. It's like give me what's mine. And he, and he had like these eyes, these spiritual eyes, knowing like like he'll, he'll be back. Amen. Come on, if anybody follow me? Like he'll be back. He's learned the good things about a good father, about, about all the supply, about having all that you need, about having everything you want, about, I, I'm, I'm sure that he thought about the sandals and the robe and the ring and everything he had and the cleanliness and being able to uh, wash up all the time. I'm sure he thought about a full belly. I'm sure he had all these thoughts in mind. But there was something about this father that, that it makes me think, man, he must have had this, uh, this set of spiritual eyes that were like, from a distance, he already knew he's coming home, and he begins to run towards him. There's no assessment necessary. Are you following me? Our baby's coming home. I see my baby, and the first thing I want him to know about me is, I love you, man. Should be. Amen. But I'm running to you because I'm me. 
miss you. And that's how God feels about us. I miss you. I miss you. Look at this. And the other. And the this. Just, I think. It says to, that's uh, the, the, the real father. Fathers don't just rely on the physical senses, but then he's spiritualized, like from the heart of God, the younger son came running to his father. And unlike many today fathers, this son's father, the Bible says, saw him, had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. Yes. Can you imagine? Yes. There would be many of us who would go, what was that smell? Uh, yeah, uh, look, let me see back in the house and get you cleaned up and then we'll talk later and maybe we'll shake a hand. Can you imagine? But that's how it, that, that, that sounds like a godly father, doesn't it? You see, because uh, uh, the minute I get you back, you're going to be clean. The minute you're back in my hands, we start from there. We don't start from judgment. We start from grace. Yes. Yes. We start from you being humble. Yes. Yes. That's our heavenly father, man. Look at this. So the other son comes running. The father had compassion. He fell on his neck. He, he, he had compassion. He ran towards him. He fell on his neck. He fell on his neck. It's like, oh, and you know, like, like, you know, and kissed him. It says and he kissed him. There's nothing like a father's kiss, man. Nothing like a father's compassion. Nothing like hearing the father say, I don't care about that, son. Just come on. Come on, come on. Well, yeah, I just thought, yeah, so what? Just come on. Get on. Come on over here. I see you right now. Right? Something sweet about that. Something about the embrace of a father. Something about the embrace of a father. Amen. So in closing, some of you here today, and maybe you've never experienced the, uh, the uh, love of a father. I know I didn't. I never had that embrace. I never have. I never had a father embrace me. I mean, I love you, Jimmy. I'm so glad you're here. Just, I miss that one. There's some of you had, haven't you? I heard it happen today and I thought, oh, I miss you. And you almost started to well up like, like ah, what a sweet thing, you know? I thought I, 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 I could probably have to be jealous about that, but I don't have a father who, uh, who loves me. But how about that and help you lately? Because I've been part time big man. You follow? Watch. Daily. Some of you out there that uh, never had that father, I've never had a father reach out and grab you. I never, thought, I never had a father come out and look for you, search for you, see where you're at. Find out where's he at. I've always told you about mom, but I never realized that it was that father because, because we always think, what's wrong with Don't you come back in here until that, that, that boy's back in my house, right? And, and, and we have that thing about that. And, but that it, and it's almost like the father was commanded to go out and do it. It's like, no, man, I got a different view. It's like, daddy's love. They can stand there and wait for me. Amen. Anybody follow me? Amen. 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 Mommy was waiting like a good mom. Daddy was, Daddy said, he'll be back. He's just going to come to his senses. This will take some time. He's got to reach a big thing. He's got to come to the bottom of the car, but, but he'll be back. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Jesus. Jesus it says here in the Word of God, it says that he is. Father to the fatherless. I want to ask, ask, ask the fathers if you just come up and join me in a line. Please stop. Please. Just stand right here. Please stop.
but it would have had to be done. And I think I need to do it. I, as I said, really, I never really have. I've been friends. I've never had a say, hey, man, I love you, man. I think about it. Thank you, okay. Glad to say they finish you off. Glad that you didn't end up dead in that street, man. Amen. 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 I'll look to the Father of the Stand Up Gentleman if you're not a father yet. It's an attitude. Right. Okay. Please. Right. Not one yet. You don't understand. You get what the spirit of what I'm saying. We have to be fathers to the fathers. Because when young kids come in here, men and women, we don't need to be hawking the women down, but they need to know that there's gentlemen in the house. Amen. 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 Couple things to you first. We face that way, please listen. Then, as I do, if, if, if uh, well, I'll tell you that. Jesus sees you like that father, a great distance off. You follow me? Amen. Jesus sees you a great distance off. He sees you a great distance off. Man. Aren't you glad that that Psalm 139, Pastor Greg was mentioning this morning, like? He sees you, he saw when you were born, he saw when you were, you know, in the embryonic stage. He, just, he saw everything, he saw that fetus. You know? he, he, he saw you when, when, when you were just a thought. And when he knew, he saw a long way off, he knew about you. He knew that you'd be that son who never had the father's touch. Next thing is that Jesus does have compassion on each one of you. Amen. He does have compassion on each one of you. If one of you were alone, he would chase the lead 99 just to chase you down. Awesome. Some of you here today need to know that you think that you've been forgotten. Jesus has been running after you for a long time. Some of you here today need to know this. Jesus wants to fall on your neck. And how do you? And what do you mean? And what do you have to really man up and know that another man loves you and cares for you. And it's not inappropriate. It's, it's a man. It's a brother's love. You know? hey, man, I love you, brother. You said about your life, your future, your family, your children, your kids. Jesus God, he wants to kiss you. The kiss of acceptance. Kiss of love, that's what that kiss was. Did you know that? It's a kiss of acceptance, it's a kiss of love. Jesus says that his love for you is so great. The kiss of a father is something that is uncomparable. You know what? I want for Harry Stone to come down here first. Come on. 
Happy Father's Day, guys.